The content of this video has been prepared by Matthew Hallberg, that's me, who was employed by Snap Inc. The perspectives and opinions expressed herein are personal to me and are not indicative of the positions or policies of Snap Inc. The proprietary device mentioned in this video has been obtained through my employment with Snap Inc. Okay, so the reception for these glasses has been pretty great so far, but there's still a few things I want to address in the most petty way possible. And look, I'm so sorry, but this clip actually made me cackle. This barista is just trying to do his job. I don't think he cares about your floating rainbows. Just put the glasses away, have a seat. You can simply put them on when you want to use them. You don't have to wear them at all times. I see some people complaining about 45 minute battery life. Let me put this a little bit differently. You can use the glasses with an external battery pack. When you unplug them, they run for 45 minutes. That's pretty insane. Unplug the Vision Pro, you can't. People talking about these glasses are large. Compared to what? I love the Meta Ray-Bans. They don't have a display. Okay, this, this is absolutely dope and I don't really have a rebuttal for this one. Let's just see, how do I get one of these? Oh no, I can't. Like, I'm not trying to pit these devices against each other. I really do love all of them. I'm just trying to give some context and I do think that all these AR and VR headsets, past and present, are all just uh, insane technical innovations that represent a super interesting set of design decisions and they should be celebrated individually. Anyway, SPS was insane and we did so many demos. LensFest, I met so many cool creators. It was so inspiring and energizing to see in person. So yeah, I just wanna show some more features of the new specs in this video. Okay, so unlike pass-through, where I feel like the captures look better than they do in person, these are optical see-through and they sort of have the opposite problem. I thought if I could film through the display, it might be more true to life, but this kind of backfired. <laughs> Somehow it looks worse. Of course, these things do have capture. You just tap the left button to start and stop recording. 46 degree FOV, dual SOC, bright display, dynamic dimming, so very visible outside. And untethered about 40 to 45 minute runtime, depending on what you're doing more if you connect to an external charger. Here's the new specs compared to the ones from 2021. I remember unboxing these for the first time and being super impressed by the form factor, but completely underwhelmed by performance and FOV. Not gonna lie, it was pretty cringe. So yeah, these are not that. AR Kit came out like six or seven years ago, and that was a massive enabling event for AR devs in particular. I'm pretty sure all my projects after that point used it in some fashion. I'm gonna make 100% biased and sensational claim here and say that these new specs kind of feel like that. The VIO is amazing. I legit skated a bowl with the old ones from three years ago and they stayed tracking the whole time. So imagine what the new ones are like. These new ones can also raycast to surfaces. They have world meshing, body tracking, speech to text, text to speech, hand tracking, image tracking, co-location. You can run your own ML models. So when I say this is a massive enabling event for AR developers, this is really the first time all this existed in one package in a portable form factor. As far as LLMs, VGPT, Blip, um, AR is the UI for AI, feels uniquely possible with this device. On a related note, another thing that's new with these specs is the extended permissions mode. So like say you wanted to send the camera frame up to your AWS server that was running Python and Flask and VGPT and Langchain, you could do that, but you just couldn't publish it, at least for now. But this is huge because of course, camera access, but the old specs didn't even have open internet access, which is a major reason why I didn't do more with them on this channel. Anyway, these are like all the features I dreamed of playing with in one device. So primary input is hand tracking. It's really good, it's come a long way. I don't wanna make another sensational claim here, but I feel like, you know, maybe it's worse than Quest, it's slightly worse than AVP, but that might be it. It's very good and it's insane that it runs on something this small in the first place. Another really interesting aspect in my opinion is the tight integration with the phone. So the Spectacles app has a ton of features. One of them is screen mirroring, um, this is spectator view where you can use the phone to see what a specs user is seeing from a third person point of view. There's also a mobile controller, which I'm particularly close to. Once you calibrate the phone coordinate system with the specs, you have six off control with your phone that does not need to be in view of the cameras at all times. 
We also align the gyro and accelerometer coordinate systems so that you can use those to predict off the mobile VIO. A byproduct of this is that when you get positional drift due to like excessive motion or the mobile camera being obstructed, the rotation is still good across Android and iOS. So that's what I'm using here for this golf lens. We have some ways to mitigate positional drift, but I don't know if I'm allowed to talk about that. Anyway, Snap ML. You can run your own custom ML models in Onyx format. The cool part about the dual SOC architecture of these glasses is that VIO and hand tracking run on one SOC. So you have the other SOC to run ML models in tandem. Co-location is another really big one. Alignment between devices can be pretty quick if you're in a feature-rich environment. The most fun I've had on this device is like playing around with my friends in the same space. As far as making AR experiences, sure, Lens Studio is not quite as robust as Unity, but I don't spend all day finding the magical combination of packages to get things working. In comparison to Spark AR and Effect House, it's just in a different league. If you want to get these glasses for yourself, you can apply through Lens Studio. I'll put a link for this down in the description. So yeah, that's pretty much all I got. As long as I don't get fired for making this video, I'd love to do some project videos on this channel using some of these new features. My thoughts on Form Factor have sort of come full circle. I'm an absolute Quest fanboy. I will be buying the Quest 3S immediately when it comes out. I love all the experiences. 11 table tennis is like one of my favorite things ever. But for some inexplicable reason, I just don't pick up my Quest that much. I think subconsciously it's the Form Factor and being blocked out from reality. Like just too much commitment after I worked all day. Same reason I probably pick up my Switch all the time and don't play console or PC games. The Switch is underpowered in comparison, graphics are worse, but it feels good and I think the convenience is what keeps me coming back. Alright, let's hear this thing.